It's a uh, 20 years of Selenium conference, like Selenium project. And uh, we are having the celebratory conference and um, they want to, and this is almost like end of the day of the conference with just one more session, uh, probably another steel cage knife fight. I don't know what uh, Jason and uh, uh, Simon is putting together. But before that, uh, we have Jim Evans here. Hey, Jim, how are you? I'm doing great, Manoj. It's good to see you as always. Absolutely, Jim. I think we have done this before and I want to, you know, rock it up or pep it up a little bit and uh, some music before we actually get started. All right, all right. <clears throat> wow, that brings back That's some memory. Rock. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> rocking this town tonight, aren't we? Yeah, like, you thank you, thank you, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, it's a fireside chat between Jim Evans and myself, your host Manoj Kumar. I work at Lambda Test as a developer relations, uh, taking care of the developer relations and office of open source. Uh, glad to be here at this Selenium Conf uh, to host the session uh, with Jim. Um, with the title, you know, Selenium at 20, it's because we're celebrating 20 years. That we're going to discuss the past, present, and what's yet to come, right? And and especially coming from the man himself who has spent the most. For those of you who don't know Jim Evans, I don't think that should be a case, but still anyway. Um, Jim works at Salesforce as a principal member of technical staff, but I think more than that, he's been known in the community uh, through the Selenium project. He's been uh, one of the long, long standing member in the project. Um, you can see them by the white hairs that Jim has. Um, so, uh, how are you, Jim? I'm doing great, thanks, Naresh. I, I'm Manoj. I'm sorry, <laughs> and I saw Naresh on the Naresh's name on the screen, and I read that, and I know I'm talking to Manoj. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, he, he is such an influencer, isn't he? And thanks to Naresh for setting up this platform for us to, you know, have. Uh, you know, uh, have a chance to interact with all of you. So, um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, the Spotify song that I played is actually a song that is composed by Jim Evans. And Jim Evans is, by the day, he's an engineer, you know, principal engineer working at Salesforce or uh, contributing to Selenium. He's also a rock star, like a proper rock star, as Simon says. Jim is a proper rock star, and that's that's uh, an evidence of it playing. And uh, what a better way, you know, to start the fireside chat uh, with Jim Evans. Let's uh, keep the chat interactive since this is fireside chat. I want it to be very, you know, informal and casual, conversational. Um, so there are some questions that I have for uh, Jim. And um, I wanted to take some questions from all the attendees here. So feel free to put your questions on the Q&A uh, chat and uh, we will take it up from there. And uh, for those of you who join, it'll be nice to see where you're joining from. So uh, just put it, put a chat, you know, uh, whatever message that you want to share to Jim as well. So, Jim. Yes. How long have you been involved with Selenium? Let's start from there. <laughs> well, uh, in December... Uh, it will be 15 years. I will have, I will, I committed my first commit to the Selenium project in 2009, in late 2009. Uh, my first commit landed working on the uh, .NET bindings for uh, just after the WebDriver project merged. So it's been a long time, decade and a half. Absolutely. What a journey it has been. Um, how did you get started or probably... When did you actually start developing Selenium or contributing Selenium rather? Well, so um, I, I've told the story before. I'll tell an abbreviated version of it this time. Um, but I was working at a at a company uh, here in Florida, and we were trying to develop an automated testing suite for our website, our web product, uh, to go along with our desktop uh, application product. <clears throat> and we were looking for, uh, we had settled on using um, Wadin, uh, which is a .NET port of water because we were a .NET shop. And that worked fine as long as we were only wor worried about Internet Explorer. And then we wanted to use Firefox and Chrome and uh, Chrome <clears throat> as those browsers started to gain more traction. And uh, and I looked at the... the um, 
the web uh, the water web driver work that that Yari Bakken had done uh, in the Ruby community, which was take the water uh, API and use web driver underneath to actually drive the browser. Uh, and since Wadin was a .NET port of water, I thought, well, we can do the same thing. Uh, we could use web driver underneath to drive using the Wat the Wadin API. Uh, and um, it was a good plan, but there were no .NET bindings for WebDriver at the time. So, or they, uh, Skeleton had been started and, and it had been abandoned halfway through. So that was how I got started. I figured, okay, here's my plan. I'll I'll create the 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 the, the .NET bindings for WebDriver, and then I'll do a a part a feature to wad in to use those bindings to drive the browser. And uh, so first I had to create the 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 dot net bindings, and then I just never got back to the second part of it um, uh, because life got in the way, and I got involved in the wonderful Selenium community, and and uh, there you have it. The rest is history, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, Jim. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, probably, um, it's it's been a couple of years, isn't it? And um, it's been what a do you minute. think? I mean, I, I'm sure the journey, the journey has been quite, quite a long. And um, according to you, what do you think is your best work in the project over these many years? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I think that probably the most enduring piece of work that I that I will have any that, that my legacy in this in the project, if you will, is going to have been the 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 dot net language bindings. Um, uh, the, probably the most technically interesting and challenging piece of work that I did was when I created the new internet Explorer driver that, that used the web driver protocol, uh, to, to, to drive internet Explorer since internet Explorer was still a thing. I mean, that is mostly legacy, you know, not unused anymore because, uh, IE has thankfully been mostly subsumed by Microsoft Edge, but um, but the um, but that's probably the most technically interesting and technically challenging uh, pieces of work that I've done as part of the project. The most satisfying thing I have done in the project uh, has not actually been code at all. Uh, it's actually been meeting wonderful people being able to talk about interesting technical problems uh, and and uh, to 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 say that I have not made some of the most enduring personal and professional relationships of my entire career, um, as well as some really, really good close friendships have come as being part of the Selenium project. And I never would have had those without without that. So um, so that's probably the most satisfying uh, thing I've had w in my time with the Selenium project. Amazing, Jim. I think as you were explaining, I was having a smile on my face because that that is definitely a satisfying experience. I think personally for me as well. Uh, I was really fortunate enough to you know uh, have a chance to interact with you, work with you over the conferences and with some of the you know tech works. Uh, I think the more important is you know the the, the bonding that we have uh, apart from. And I was from, I don't know how the other projects work. For some projects, it may just be the chat in the IRC of a Slack, but I think for Selenium, it's much more than that. But unfortunately, we have the Selenium conference, uh, unlike today, uh, instead of virtual. Like, I think we've enjoyed the in person conferences, and I'm hoping the in person conferences comes in the coming years. Uh, we have yes. enjoyed those many uh, in person conferences as well. So, speaking of friends, um, I have something to share. Uh oh. <clears throat> All right. I hope the screen is still shared. Yep. So as you've started your screen sharing. Yep. Now it's uh, still loading up. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it's okay. dead now. All right. There are some photos. <laughs> yes. It's, okay. It's, it's about it's about Jim's journey, right? And Serenity Mat Twenty. So let's look at some of your pictures and uh, Jim, you've got like a minute or so. Um, sure. Just tell us what does strike when you see the photo. This is a great photo. This is one of my favorite photos. We've, we've, um, this is, this is a, a photo of the web driver, uh, the browser testing and tools working group uh, of the, uh, of the W3C. Um, we had met 
in London for a face-to-face -face meeting when we were first working on the web driver spec for the W3C. And this was at the end, of, after we'd done a day's worth of work, we went out looking for burgers and we, we we found hamburgers and we sat there on the side of the road and ate our hamburgers that we that we got for dinner that that, that evening um the, the, you'll notice there is there is one person who is missing uh, uh from that working group photo uh that would be our illustrious friend Simon Stewart the reason that he's not in that photo is because he's behind the camera he's the one who took that photo Nice. Good excuse. I think I'm sure Simon is there in the other photos. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm actually tempted to ask, do you really remember the names of these people in the photo? But again, it's a concert of the time. Uh, <laughs> but I could I could recognize some faces like Luke, Luke and then David himself. And then I, uh, I recognize Malini. Malini. <laughs> I, I know I know I can I can name almost everyone in that photo off the top of my head. Um, but uh, but in the interest of brevity, yep. I will not. All right, here comes the next one. Oh, wow. Um, let's see. That looks like a TPAC face-to-face -face photo from when it was in um, South Bay in the San Francisco Bay Area in um, Santa Clara, I believe. <clears throat> this was at the, every year, the, um, the World Wide Web uh, consortium, the W3C, uh, has uh, what it's called its technical plenary and advisory committee sessions, which basically all the members of the W3C send their representatives to a, a common location and all the working groups have breakout sessions. Uh, it's usually in the fall. In fact, this year it's going to be in September uh, in Anaheim, California, and uh, it, it's usually different places around the world. Last year, I think, was in was in France. Um, anyway, um, this this looks like that working group uh, again. This was a couple of years after that previous photo was taken uh, at the uh, at the TPAC uh, 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 gathering for the W3C. Is 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 David always like this? Like the nice kid in the class? That that is that is when, when David when David is in photos, yes, that is that is how he generally uh, is, <laughs> is, uh, it shows up. Uh, and as you can see, there's there's a Simon who is speaking next with Jason Huggins is right behind me in that photo. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, lots of great selenium representation among that uh, among that group. Amazing, and I think I just saw there was an invite for TPAC 2024, which will be this time. Yes, it's in September this year. Amazing. Hoping there's lots of discussion around by day a lot more is yes. coming up. Cool. All right. Um, I think you mentioned about a lot of friends. Um, talk about this man. Um, right next to you. <laughs> one of my closest friends in the world, to be honest, um, Simon Stewart, a man who really needs no further introduction from me. Uh, but uh, over the years, we've grown very close. Uh, our families know one another. Um, uh, and, and, um, you know, we, we've been through some ups and downs outside of the project, uh, and, and, um, he, he's, he's, he's my brother. I love him. I, I think he's, I think he's great. And, uh, uh, that's going to be enough of that. I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> I'll stop right there. And that's a, you know, good example of, you know, how you, you get life for friends. Uh, yes. that's just an example. And, um. That's how the project is lovely. And that's also I love being with the project. It's been a couple of years for me as well. And uh, for that very reason, I love to stick around with a bunch of good folks like Simon Jim and a lot of other contributors around the CNN project. All right, now getting back to your journey where you um, mentioned about you know, how you started with the water project and the web driver mm -hmm. and uh, your most satisfying contribution, Jim. Um, slightly taking turns, um, coming to the present. How do you mm -hmm. use CNN today? <clears throat> well, today, uh, as um, as uh, as um, at Salesforce where I work, um, uh, we use Selenium extensively. Now we are a Java shop uh, here at at Salesforce, so we use the Java language bindings um, and a version of the Salesforce grid to run uh, an insane number of uh, Selenium-based tests. Uh, there have been a number of presentations at Selenium conferences over the years. 
that we really run too many uh, selenium tests, but um, but that's how I use them on a day-to-day -day basis. I am also in charge of a page object framework that uses selenium to uh, to to uh, for for our internal and external users to use uh, selenium uh, to automate their their solutions and their features. So that's how it's I use it. Called the UTAM. It's UTAM, UTAM is the name of the of the page framework, UI test automation framework, or model. Sorry. Amazing. That's good to see because sometimes we start Selenium, like especially in your case, it was like way back, and it's amazing to see that you're still currently using that to your, you know, absolutely. Place. Awesome. So, um, yeah, there's a note from Sabash. Yeah, um, please raise hands, and uh, I think it'll be better if you put your questions in the Q and A section uh, because I have lots of questions, but would love to hear your <laughs> questions from the audience as well. Um, yes, ask so, me anything. Um, absolutely, but Jim. Um, What's your current level of involvement with the project? I've backed off from the project uh, a little bit as far as daily contrib contributions. I'm still, you know, in our IRC and Slack channels every day, and I read everything that that goes through there, uh, and I try to pitch in when I can. Um, but the the .NET language bindings are have been mostly stable for a, a number of years now in terms of the amount of code that needed to go into them. Um, and so the so I have not been pushing as much code into the project. Uh, my involvement has been more at a uh, more technical level, um, it, advising on what should an API look like, how should we implement things, what are the features that we that we really want to to pursue, um, and how and what are the best ways to go about getting those features. Um, and and th that's my. Mostly what I'm what I'm involved with on a day to day basis currently with the project. Um, I'm also involved in the, uh, the I'm still involved with the W3C, the Browser Testing and Tools Working Group, uh, which is creating a new web driver specification, uh, which is which involves bidirectional communication between the browser and the controlling software. Um, it's called Web Driver um, and that's the, uh, and, and so that, so that is something that I spend current brain cycles working on that is Selenium related. I almost changed my reaction when you said you almost backed on the project, but I think you're doing a much more <laughs> impactful job, <laughs> uh, while, you know, working with the specs and the tools group. And, uh, it's lovely to have you still, you know, involved with the more impactful, uh, to the browser automation ecosystem overall. So, um, thanks, Jim. Well, and one of the things that we pride ourselves in on the Selenium project is that when you pick up one of the language bindings for a given for for a given programming language, that the um, that the, the 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 developer experience of using that API feels idiomatic to that uh, to that language. So if you if you're using the Python language bindings, it feels like you're writing a, a Python li with a Python library, not something that was ported from Java. Uh, and uh, and so I try to advise on uh, specifically still try to keep my hand in advising on the .NET API shape, the shape of the .NET APIs uh, for that. Like we slightly touched upon this. Um, I've been in the project for a while and I've almost worked with different language findings. And this is also something that I hear from uh, other folks uh, who are whom I met who are customers and users. Um, have you ever thought why the API design, speaking of API design, as you just touched upon, uh, why are the language bindings are different? Well, uh, again, and it goes back to trying to make them feel idiomatic to the, to, to the, to the language binding. For example, Java, everything's a method on, on a class. So to get the text of a, of a, of a, of a, an element, you, you call the, the get text method. But in .NET, you have these things called properties that have getters and setters, and uh, instead of separate methods, so it feels more natural to call the text property of an element than it does to call a get text method uh, in in .NET, or at least it did when we first started the language bindings. That's changing a little bit, but in the .NET ecosystem, uh, and so that's one of the re that the differences in language bindings mostly come down to um what's going to feel natural to a, a a veteran coder of that language so that it's it's it doesn't feel like 
everything started from one one place and then and then um and then and then got ported without any consideration for how it feels to program in a different language um speaking of um i'm sure this is something that we even discussed a while back um selenium is dying is a phrase that i'm <laughs> sure we have all seen um speaking of that um what is currently or probably rather i would say is there a threat for selenium what do you think well uh let me see i i i've I've run into this a couple of times <clears throat> recently with some of the newer projects that are coming out and or that have come out in the last couple of years. Uh, the the <clears throat> the fact that Selenium has been around for 20 years uh, is a testament to its to its longevity and to its uh, continued usefulness. Uh, the the the. The. Uh, we are seeing things change in terms of people what the paradigms that people expect for uh for for browser based testing tools to to have but the selenium project is uh uniquely qualified to uh to adapt to those paradigms to be able to provide new features um I will point out that among the competitors uh, that that I've seen that that tout to be better that people when people say Selenium is dead, uh, and they point to these other tools as a um, as as a as a um, uh, as as proof of that, and that new tools are are better or whatever. I still point out that uh, that Selenium today is the is is one of the only solutions that I know of that is one fully open source not some corporate corporate open source that is really they just put the source out in public public source if you will that uses open web standards for all of its work with the browser and three actually uses the same exact browser that your customer will be using uh, to to automate the to 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 automate the testing of uh, of your tests or to automate the browser that's being that's being used. Other uh, all of the other competitors that I know of that are not based on WebDriver, um, either fail in one of those other areas. Um, we have one question from Benjamin. Um, have there ever been discussions to drop certain bindings because they are underused? Uh, no, we've never really come across that particular question. Um, I don't. I don't think that. Um, I don't think that we have ever seriously entertained that possibility. We have, on from time to time, considered whether we want to add additional language bindings. Um, uh, PHP had some had had some uh, some proponents for a while, but um, but it uh, but we never adopted one. Um, so no, I don't think we've ever really seriously entertained the idea of removing one of the language bindings that we currently support. I hope that answered your question, Benjamin. Thanks, Jim, for that. All right, uh, one more picture time. Talk about this picture, Jim. Do you remember where this was taken? And, uh, maybe a few words about, especially the person who's sitting, sitting on the floor. <laughs> that was, that, I believe, was that in the green room at the Selenium conference in London? Uh, I believe. In fact, it might have been the one from this very T-shirt um, uh, in London. Um, and uh, on the on, sitting on the floor there in in the green room is uh, is my my lovely my lovely bride of uh, of nearly of, of nearly twenty years, Patty. Uh, and um, and you can see some familiar faces there that should be of uh, should be very familiar to most of us who have been working in the um, on the project for a, a long time. Yeah, you're almost right, Jim. I think it was the 2019 Selenium Con. But just a small yeah. correction. I don't think it's a green room. I think it's Simon's house. Oh, no, no you're right. This is Simon's Simon, apartment. Simon's that's sweet home. Simon's yeah, that's right. He was Simon's hosting house. us for a barbecue yes, steak. Yes, he was. And, yeah. He was. There you go. Friends for life again. Come, yes, come to Selenium Project. <laughs> All right. Jim, um, we have like last two, three minutes to finish this session um unfortunately yeah simon ah. is there that was my home yeah it is right <laughs> i corrected him um so 
Last two questions, maybe a question a minute each. Sure. Uh, we'll be right on time. Like, how do you see Selenium evolving, and um, how can Selenium remain relevant? Well, so the to answer the first question, uh, how does it remain relevant is 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 intimately tied in with the first, which is how do how does it evolve? And uh, it remains relevant by evolving and by adapting to uh, the the newer expectations of of what what users want from a, a browser automation library, and what what people seem to be wanting are things like, um, you know, being able to wait for an event from the browser. Uh, like when a navigation starts or when a navigation completes or and get information about that navigation or uh, monitoring the DOM for changes and being notified when those changes happen, not just polling every half second and seeing if the change has occurred. Um, so I think that, uh, and, and that speaks to uh, a communication protocol that not just is based on a response uh, on a, on a request and response like HTTP, but one that allows communication in both directions or bi-directional, which is what WebDriver BiDi is all about. And I think that you'll see over the course of the next the next few years that uh, Selenium will evolve to have uh, the uh, BiDi features that are uh, based off of the WebDriver BiDi. Uh, protocol, uh, as opposed to something proprietary, which uh, like the Chrome DevTools protocol, which is what uh, most solutions use today for something like that. Um, and um, yeah, so so I think that's, that's the other thing. The other thing that I think you'll see the Selenium project um, uh, evolve with is you'll see, I think you'll see more batteries included features. Uh, like we've 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 in the last year or so we started uh, the the uh, regular use of Selenium Manager for automatic um, management of browser drivers like Chrome Driver and Gecko Driver and so on, uh, which we didn't have before. Uh, relying instead of relying on third party ecosystems or part of the eco the the Selenium ecosystem, we'll build those into the project. So that's how I think it remains relevant going forward. Amazing. Amazing, Tim. Thank you so much. I believe we're right on time. Unfortunately, uh, the session will actually throw us off. But uh, thank you so much, Jim. Uh, for, for those of you, I think we have more than 150 folks. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we discussed, you know, the journey of Jim being the the, the past, the present, and how he foresees uh, the future of the selling project itself, and some memories to be kindled and bring, you know, have, have Jim have nostalgic experience. I hope you all enjoy the sessions and uh, thank you everyone for joining, especially Jim. Thank you so much. And we wish to see your contributions keep coming all the next coming years as well. Great. My pleasure. Thanks. Good to see you.